Hey Mount 31, I had a request to do number 49. So we're gonna take a look at it. Now, if you haven't watched the videos for numbers 25 and 29, I would recommend that. So potentially it might be good to watch the videos for numbers 25 and 29 because we're completing the square in both of those videos. And I've talked about when you go to complete the square, which is just one of your methods for solving a quadratic equation. All right, whenever you wanna complete the square, you're gonna take half of the coefficient of the linear term, half of the coefficient of the linear term, and square it. Now, this only works so long as the coefficient in front of the quadratic term is zero. So we're gonna work on all of that right now. So if I look at my, my starting equation right here, and we're gonna basically derive the quadratic formula, I have ax squared plus bx plus c. So a couple things I would note just looking at this. I note that the, the term, excuse me, the coefficient in front of my quadratic term is not one. That's gonna be a problem. And I also just want to take note that right now there's, there's the coefficient in front of my linear term. All right, but the, the biggest problem right now is that the coefficient in front of this linear, excuse me, quadratic term is not 1. So what I'm going to do before I do anything else is I'm going to divide everything in this equation by the letter A. So I'm going to divide this term by A, this term by A, this term by A. All right, and so if I do that, you can see the A's are going to cancel here. So I will get x squared. I'm gonna have b over a times x here, and then I'm gonna have c over a equaling zero. So you can kind of think of that as step 1.5. If this is one and this is step two, then this might have been considered step 1.5. Because in order to complete the square, you need to make sure that your lead coefficient in front of your quadratic term is one. And right now, since there's no number in front of the x squared, we would assume it was one. All right, now with that, I wanna now focus on the coefficient in front of my linear term. The rule is take half of the coefficient in front of the linear term and square it. So let's do that. So I'm gonna take the coefficient in front of my linear term, I'm gonna take half of it, and I'm gonna square it. And let's see what that winds up looking like. So I have b over a divided by two, which is like, oops, let me not forget the squaring which is like saying b over a times 1 half, again, squared. I've got some fractions, so I'm going to multiply the numerators. I'm going to multiply the denominators. I'm going to square it. Now, because the, the term in this parentheses, it's, it's got a b up top and a 2a on the bottom, because there's just division inside of those parentheses, I can distribute that exponent and make this b squared over 2a quantity squared. And I've had students in the past struggle with this. I'm gonna tell you right here, I, the most common mistake I get is students will tell me this is 2a squared. And maybe you see the error, maybe you don't, but let me show you why this is, and let me make sure I use the right, a, better, a different colored pen. This is bad news bears. All right, so the reason for that, if I write this out, this is b squared, and on the denominator, I basically have 2a times 2a, and two times two is four. So I really get b squared over 4a squared. That is half of the coefficient of my linear term squared. Okay, so what you do when you're dealing with completing the square, I'm gonna start this from, oops, excuse me, from where we left off. All right, so I'm gonna come from step 1.5. So we had x squared plus b over ax plus c over a is equal to zero. And there's a couple of ways you can write this. I'm gonna go over both of them and then I'll, you'll see which one matched this, this line here. So what you can do is you can take x squared plus b over ax, leave a little space, plus c over a, leave a little space equals zero. And what you can do is you can add, oops, it's not showing up there, add b squared over 4a squared and subtract b squared over 4a squared to the same side of the equation. And since I'm adding this term and subtracting this term, I'm ultimately adding zero, so I'm not changing the problem. And then what happens is these three terms turn into a perfect square trinomial. This turns into x plus b 
b over 2a squared, and then we can simplify, oops, I moved it there, we can simplify this term and ultimately move it to this side of the equation. All right, now I didn't exactly use that method when I showed you my work up here. So another thing you can do, instead of adding and subtracting the same term to each, or excuse me, adding and subtracting the term to the same side of the equation, what you can do up top, and I'm gonna put a little space here, is you can take x squared plus b over ax plus c over a is equal to zero, and you can just move the constant over. So I can just move c over a here, right? And then what you can do is you have the option of adding b squared over 4a squared to both sides of the equation. Right, so that's what you saw me doing up here. Right, you can see I moved the c over a to the right side of the equation, and then I added b squared over 4a squared to both sides of the equation. All right, let me erase this stuff because I have it down there. All right, so once we get going, then again, these three terms turn into x plus b over 2a. All right, quantity squared. When I get these with like terms, these fractions here, in order to add them, I need like terms. So I'm ultimately gonna multiply, I'll change colors here. I'm gonna multiply this fraction by 4a over 4a. And that's where you see me getting the 4ac because negative c times 4a is 4ac. I've got my common denominator of 4a squared. And then once you're there, once you've solved for that, that binomial squared, you square root both sides, the plus or minus shows up, right? And then the square root and the squaring goes away. So I'm getting part of that quadratic formula. And then the last thing I need to do is move that term over. But then the square root of 4a squared is also 2a. That's why you see me combining like terms. So this is just another way or a way to derive the quadratic formula if you want. Uh, this is where it comes from, all right, or this is one of the ways that, like I said, you can derive it, and, and we've, we've, I'm sure you guys have used the quadratic formula a bunch of times in your life, but that's how you get it, via completing the square, all right? Thanks so much, gang. Bye.